My message to you today is this. Europe needs a new direction. And that direction cannot be based on old ideas. Europe needs a new thinking of development and humanitarian assistance that stands. Globalization demands more European unity. More unity demands more integration. More integration demands more democracy, European democracy. A deep and genuine economic... What I demand and what I present to you today is a decisive deal for Europe. A decisive deal to project our values, our freedom, our prosperity into the future of a globalized world. A deal that combines the needs to keep our social market economies on one hand and the need to reform them on the other. A deal that will stabilize the EMU, boost sustainable growth and restore competitiveness. A deal that will establish a contract of confidence between our countries, between member states and European institutions between the social partners and between citizens and the European Union. Proposal soon. The decisive deal for Europe means that we must leave no doubt about the integrity of the Union or the irreversibility of the Euro. The more vulnerable countries must leave no doubts about their willingness to reform, about their sense of responsibility. But the stronger countries must leave no doubts about their willingness to stick together, about their sense of solidarity. We must all... <laughs> and we must all leave no doubts that we are determined to reform and to reform together. The idea that we can grow without reform or that we can prosper alone is simply false. We must recognize that we are in this together and we must resolve it together. This decisive deal requires the completion of a deep and genuine economic union based on a political union. Including elements for reinforced democracy and... Let's be clear, the European budget is the instrument for investment in Europe and growth in Europe. The Commission and this Parliament... <laughs> the Commission and this Parliament, indeed all pro-European forces, because most of the member states support our proposal, must now stand together in support of the right multi-annual financial framework that will take us to 2020. In recent months, we have seen threats to the legal... And now it's come as a test of credibility to many of our member states. I want to see if the same member states that were all the time speaking about the need for growth and investment for growth will now support the budget for growth at European level. <laughs> Fairness and equity means giving a chance to our young people. We are already doing a lot. And before the end of the year, the Commission will launch a youth package that will establish a youth guarantee scheme and equality framework to facilitate vocational training. Fairness and equity means also creating better and fairer taxation systems, stopping tax fraud and tax evasion could put extra billions into the public purse across Europe. This is why the Commission, this is why the Commission will fight for an agreement on the revised saving tax directive and on mandates to negotiate stronger saving tax agreements with third countries. Their completion will be a major source of legitimate tax revenues. And the Commission will continue to fight for a fair and ambitious financial transaction tax that will ensure that taxpayers benefit from the financial sector, not just that the financial sector benefits from taxpayers. Honourable Members, a deep and genuine economic... Honourable Members, our agenda of circular reform requires a major adjustment effort, and it will only work if it is fair and equitable, because inequality is not sustainable. But these situations also revealed limits. And allow me to say a word on Greece. I truly believe that we have a chance this autumn to come to the turning point. If Greece banishes all doubts about its commitment to reform, but also if all the other countries banish all doubts about their determination to keep Greece in the euro area, we can do it. I believe that if Greece stands by its commitments, it should stay in the euro area as a member of the European family. 
We must complete the economic and monetary union. We must create a banking union and a fiscal union and the corresponding institutional and political mechanisms. Today, the Commission is presenting legislative proposals for a single European supervisory mechanism for the Eurozone. This is the stepping stone to the banking union. And of solidarity. In short, our values. The single supervisory mechanism proposed today will create a reinforced architecture with a core role for the European Central Bank and appropriate articulation with the European Banking Authority, which will restore confidence in the supervision of the banks in the euro area. It will be a supervision for all euro area banks. Supervision must be able to look everywhere because systemic risks can be anywhere, not just in so-called systemically relevant banks. This is a crucial first step towards the banking union. But there is a second element of a deeper economic union. It is the move towards a fiscal union. The case for it is clear. The economic decisions of one member state impact the others. So we need stronger economic policy coordination. We need a stronger and more binding framework for the national decision-making for key economic policies as the only way to prevent imbalances. While much has been done here, for instance through the six-pack and through the country-specific recommendations, further steps are crucial to combine specific conditions with specific incentives and to really make the economic and monetary union sustainable. To deliver lasting results, we need to develop a fully equipped community economic governance together with a genuine, credible community fiscal capacity. We do not need to separate institutions or to create new institutions for that. Quite the contrary. For this to be effective and quick, the best way is to work with and through the existing institutions. We show so little confidence on each other. To me, it is this. The Commission will publish a blueprint for deepening the economic and monetary union still this autumn. This blueprint will be presented to this House because these questions must be discussed with and by the representatives of the people to do what we must do. You can count on the European Commission. If we want economic and monetary union to succeed, we need to combine ambition and proper sequencing. We need to take concrete steps now, but with a political union as the horizon. I would like to see development of European public space where European issues are discussed and debated from a European standpoint. We cannot continue trying to solve European problems just with national solutions. This debate has to take place in our... And I also make this appeal to you. This is the house of European democracy. We must strengthen the role of the European Parliament at European level. And we need to promote a genuine complementarity and cooperation between the European and national parliaments. This also cannot be done without strengthening European political parties. Indeed, we have very often a real disconnect between political parties in the capitals and the European political parties here in Strasbourg. This is why we have to recognize that the political debate is cast all too often as if it were just between national parties. Even in the European elections, we don't see the name of the European political parties in the ballot box we see a discussion national between national parties. This is why we need a reinforced statute for European political parties. I am proud to announce that the Commission has adopted today a proposal for this. An important means to deepen the pan-European political debate would be the presentation by European political parties of their candidate for the post of Commission President at European Parliament elections already in 2014. This can be done without treaty change. And this will be a decisive step to make the possibility of a European choice offered by these elections even clearer. I call on the political parties to commit to this step and thus to further Europeanize the European elections. <laughs> Mr. President and honorable members, a true political European action, Union means we must concentrate European action on the true real issues that matter and must be dealt with at European level. Let's be frank about this. Not everything can be at the same time a priority. We need to be more selective. And here, 
some self-criticism probably would apply. Proper integration is about taking a fresh look at where is the most appropriate level of action. Subsidiarity is an essential democratic concept and should be practiced. But the political union also means that we must strengthen the foundations on which our union is built, the respect of our fundamental values for the rule of law and democracy. Our commitment to upholding the rule of law is also behind our intention to establish a European Public Prosecutor's Office as foreseen by the treaties. We will come with a proposal soon. A political union also means doing more to fulfill our global role. Sharing sovereignty in Europe means being more sovereign in a global world. In today's world, size matters. And values make the difference. The appalling situation in Syria reminds us that we cannot afford to be bystanders. A new and democratic Syria must emerge. We have a joint responsibility to make this happen and to work with those in the global order that need to give also their cooperation for that goal. The world also needs a EU that keeps its leadership of development and humanitarian assistance, that stands by open economies and fights protectionism, that leads the fight against climate change. Today, I call for a federation of nation states, not a super state. A democratic, a democratic federation of nation states that can tackle our common problems through the sharing of sovereignty in a way that each country and each citizen are better equipped to control their own destiny. This is about union with the member states, not against the member states. Creating this federation of nation states will ultimately require a new treaty. And I do not say this lightly. We are all aware how difficult treaty change has become. It has to be well prepared. Discussions on treaty change must not distract or delay us from doing what can and must be done already today. A deep and genuine and economic monetary union can be started under the current treaties, but can only be completed with changes in the treaties. So let's start it now, but let's have the horizon for the future present in our decisions of today. We must not begin with treaty change. We must identify the policies we need and the instruments to implement them. Only then can we decide on the tools that we lack and the ways to remedy this. Let me be very clear. In Europe, we need no more walls dividing us. Because the European Union is stronger as a whole in keeping the integrity of its single market, its membership, and its institutions. No one will be forced to come along, and no one will be forced to stay out. But the speed will not be dictated by the slowest or the most reluctant. This is why our proposal will be based on the existing union and its institutions, on the community method. Let's be clear, there is only one European Union, one European Commission, one European Parliament. More democracy, more transparency, more accountability is not created by a proliferation of institutions that would render the European Union more complicated, more difficult to read, less coherent, and less capable to act. This is why our proposal will be based on the existing Union and its institutions, on the community method. Let's be clear, there is only one European Union, one European Commission, one European Parliament. More democracy, more transparency, more accountability is not created by a proliferation of institutions that would render the European Union more complicated, more difficult to read, less coherent, and less capable to act. We must use the 2014 election to mobilize all pro-European forces. We must not allow the populists and the nationalists to set a negative agenda. I expect all those who call themselves Europeans to stand up and take the initiative in the debate. Because even more dangerous than the skepticism of the anti-Europeans is the indifference or the pessimism of the pro-Europeans. Mr. President, honorable members, to sum up, what we need is a decisive deal to complete the MU based on a political commitment to a stronger European Union. 
This is our project, a project that is step by step, but with a big ambition for the future, with a federation as the horizon for Europe. You can count on the European Commission. I count on you, European Parliament, because together, as community institutions, we will build a better, stronger, a more united Europe, a citizens' union for the future of Europe, but also for the future of the world. I thank you for your attention.